Scott Simpson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I too want to join with others across the House in supporting this third reading of uh, what is a private bill uh, initiated uh, by the Foundation uh, who have again shown to the House and to their uh, stakeholders and to the whole nation their level of innovation and credibility in terms of keeping themselves modern, keeping themselves relevant and keeping themselves focused on the future. Sir, others have spoken at length about the history of the uh, Foundation. I don't want to go there, but I do want to just uh, reflect for a couple of minutes on the matters that came before the select committee. Um, firstly, there was a short but quite important initial briefing uh, from our ministerial advisers. And, uh, sir, I think it's uh, worthwhile just noting that the ministerial advisers supported wholeheartedly this bill. They didn't uh, offer any uh, further drafting suggestions, they didn't offer any changes, and they didn't recommend any to the committee. But what they did do was highlight that this is one of a number of uh, private acts of parliament that provide for incorporation of single entities. Now, the problem with these uh, historic and largely traditional pieces of legislation, sir, is that for the most part, they are by today's modern standards not what we would call high quality uh, pieces of legislation. They're not high quality statutes. And as a general rule, uh, they fail to uh, provide or address uh, what we now consider uh, quite important issues relating to governance, rights and obligations of the uh, uh, governance holders, and they fail to address uh, things like uh, officers' duties. Now, sir, uh, I think it's very uh, laudable and credible that the Foundation took it upon themselves to address these sorts of issues through uh, bringing this private bill to the House. And, sir, there are probably a number of other worthy, credible uh, organisations that, like the Blind Foundation, uh, probably need some improvement to their governance and um, legislative uh, status as well. So there was only one submission to the Select Committee, and it came from the Foundation itself. The Foundation was very keen to highlight in its submission two key reasons for this legislation uh, to proceed. The first one was that by keeping the Act on the statute books, it causes confusion to them, to their stakeholders, to their members, and to the uh, other people that contract and do business and uh, support them in their good work. And so, um, while Whilst the uh, uh, Foundation is still a statutory body, um, it's not going to be one that is reflected in the way that it used to be under the existing legislation that was now completely out of date. And the second point, uh, Mr Speaker, was that the, uh, so that, that the Foundation wanted to repeal the, the Act because um, they want to make sure that they can communicate to all and sundry that they act independently of Parliament, that they're not a, that they're not a creature of Parliament. And the Foundation's rich history, uh, I think, will be well served in the future by this new piece of legislation. There is one technical point that was raised in their submission, sir, that I do think is of merit and does need a little bit of focus, and that is that um, it relates to uh, copyright matter. Now, sir, the Foundation does an enormous amount of good work in terms of providing audio books for people who, uh, um, have, uh, who are blind or have low vision. And there is an issue that relates to um, copyright rules and regulations that means that under this legislation, uh, that when the Foundation does that good work uh, of uh, providing audio books for their members and stakeholders, uh, that they will be exempt from the Copyright Act under uh, uh, Regulation 5 um, of that, that Act. So, sir, this is a, a good piece of legislation, it's a worthy piece of legislation, but I think the most important thing about it for the Foundation is that it's forward-looking. It, um, it builds on their credible, a creative past and will set them up for, the, for a long and prosperous future, doing enormously good work for uh, more than 12,000 New Zealanders who are either blind or have low vision. So I join with others in commending it to the House as a very good piece of legislation. Kevin Haig.